Gen Erase, Erasing Reinvented, is our topic today. Uh, Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to show you a new feature we'll be adding real soon, and that's Gen Erase. Now, the difference between the Erase tool that we already have now, which is phenomenal, and Gen Erase is the Erase tool we have now is your traditional one. It's using computer the computer uh, technology to where it's going to analyze the pixels around what you want to erase, and it's going to try to recreate that gap. All right. With Jenny Race, the difference is it's going to do the same concept, but it's going to go up to the cloud and it's going to try to predict what should be in that spot. Now, what's really cool about the stuff that we have here is uh, the, the Jenny Race that we're dealing with is 1536, I believe, by 1536 pixels, meaning that when it, when it um, regenerates a certain area, it's going to give it the highest quality that it can. So the textures in the road or in the fields are going to look awesome. All right. So let me just jump right in. I'm going to do this one first and I'm going to click right from here, Jenny Race. Now, it may not be in that position once we uh, release it, but this is a beta. I'm going to increase the brush size really large. And notice I don't really have to go too precise. In fact, I'm going to give it more information than it needs. Then I'm going to hit erase. Now, again, this is in beta. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while to recreate this scene. And if we don't like the results, then I'll hit reset and just keeps on going until I get the results that I want. Now, typically when, it, when I did this particular image, like one out of every five times, it gave me something weird. And then I can go back in and do traditional erase or regenerate it. Because I'm showing you guys this live, uh, I don't want to constantly go back over, but I am going to show you what it does. All right. But look at this. Look how awesome it, it, it went from this selection here and it reproduced the road, which I thought was awesome. I'm going to hit save. When I hit save, it's going to store it right here into a new folder called Generative uh, Creations. All right, now I'm going to show you the comparison between the two. So here's the first one. And then look at this. This was the one I created earlier and very similar to the one you just saw. All right, now let's go on to this one here. Uh, Tomas, one of our, or one of my coworkers, took this photo. Oh, let me get back to it. And imagine this as somebody photobombing uh, one of your landscape photos and you have to get rid of them. Or, I hate to say it, what if this were an X <laughs> and you love the photo, but you don't want them in the scene anymore. So I'm going to come in again and I'm going to select the, uh, the person, but I'm also going to select the shadow. So I want to get rid of that shadow here. And again, we'll hit Gen Erase and we'll see what happens from here. So it does a really good job in a case like this. Um, I could use the traditional Erase tool or to use Gen Erase. The complicated erases, that's when you want to use the new technology, Gen Erase. But in a case like this, our old erase tool still always did a very good job, but let's see what it does on this image here. And again, it's analyzing the pixels and it's trying to predict what I think it should look like. Look at that, that's beautiful. Now I'm not gonna save it. I'm gonna cancel. All right, and we'll do the comparison on that one too. So look at that, there it is. Did a great job. Now, let's move on to one of these. Okay, yeah, well, let's move on to this. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is I'm gonna show you a couple ways of using Gen Erase. First off, select per object. So I wanna get rid of, I want 
this right here, I want this to have the rules of odd. I want three cars, I don't want four. So I'm gonna come in here, select it like we did before. I got that. Now, I could be tempted to get rid of this driver or this bicycle rider, this bicycle rider, and this shadow. I could be tempted to do that, but don't. And I'll tell you why, is that 1536 by 1536 is focusing on that particular area that I want to erase. So the quality is gonna be phenomenal. If I start going all over the place, now you're separating it, all right? So on complicated images, select the objects you wanna get rid of one by one. Now, once this generates, just for the sake of time, I am gonna grab the other three. It'll still do a very good job, but it's better to grab those afterwards, all right? So let's give it a second, now look at that. Beautiful, now watch. If I hover over, you see how that's still selected? If it didn't do a good job, this is where I would come down and hit erase again. And then it's already selected. It'll regenerate that over and over and over and over again. But since we already have a good erase, I'm gonna reset that selection. Now I'm gonna come over here and let's get rid of this bicycle rider. And yes, like I said earlier, select per object. Let me get rid of that right there. But just for the sake of speed, I'm going to grab all of these right now. All right, so now all of them are selected. Erase. Part of me is hoping it doesn't do a perfect job so I can show you how to go back over it. So once it comes back again, it's... Analyzing those, just those three areas, because I deselected the truck um, and then the first one, so it's not going to analyze that area. So make sure if there's multiple objects you want to erase, select one at a time. If it doesn't do it the way you want it, hit erase again, and I'll regenerate over and over. All right, let's give it a second. Now remember, it is going up to the cloud, doing its thing and coming back. Look how beautiful that is. All right, now notice again, look at this. If I don't want, let's say I made the selection, I can always come back with deselect and paint out the selection here. Uh, I can make the brush larger or smaller, or I can use the left and right bracket keys. All right, so let me cancel out of this. I really should have saved that one because I don't think I had a comparison one. Nope, oh yes I did, right here. So here it is, before, after, great job, now. <laughs> I was already told by the team that this is just a happy uh, coincidence that is doing this, but as a portrait photographer, this right here is the biggest pain in the neck when you're dealing with glasses. Jenny Ray's gonna do a great job on this. Now, just to save face with all of you, is that when I originally did this, and by the way, I noticed that with the beta, if I zoom in like I just did, I may have overloaded the system. And I think I did, yep, I did. So in a case like this, I'm going to reboot it. One moment. Let me close out of it and get right back in. Yeah, so I noticed that again with the beta, if I zoom in like I just did, um, there's a little memory leak that they're working on that is going to cause issues. So if it does, I'll just have to reboot it and bring it back up again. So let's come in. Here we are. All right. Now, just to save face, I purposely made the glare in the eyes um, because I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to show Jenny race. So I'm going to select that. So hope I don't crash it. And I'm gonna select the bottom and the bottom again. There we go. Now erase. All right, and let's see what happens. So now how I fixed it in camera was, see how the subject's head was here? I just moved it slightly 
the angle of reflection got rid of that glare in the eyes. But the moment I saw that, the first shot I took, I saw this is perfect. It'll be great to teach people how to remove reflections if you don't do it right in camera. So again, in camera, you need to play with the angle of the light. And the way to do that is just by moving the subject. Or yes, you can take the, the, the glasses and move it on the tip of the nose and so on. But look at this. Look, look what I had erased. I'm going to just save it. And it's saving it as a TIFF. There we go. And it was this one right here. Yep. Look at that. What a great job it did. Because again, right now we're not at that level with Jenny Ray's to do faces, but I thought they did a phenomenal job on that. Now, to here, or from here, to finish this off, honestly, I would just come in here, either using the erase tool, or I'll just come down here to the clone tool, select an area, get rid of that piece, and then I've already created a preset for portraits like this. Uh, let's see where it is. I believe it's portrait two. Let's run it, look at that. Before, after, and there we have it. Did that not, I did do the, the clone. Let me double check to make sure. Oh, because I did the, um, because I ran the preset. I should have ran the preset first. So back to the clone, click, and get rid of that up there. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is just because we have that new tool, doesn't mean you always have to use it. Look how fast the clone and stamp tool did that. And then some of them, the erase tool may be faster, but for the complicated images, like this one that I showed you here, this is where that generative or gen erase comes in handy. All right? So there we have it. That's gen erase. Let me see something real quick. If I, yes, I do. So let me just show you this real quick. All right, so the generative um, erase is built on fusion, the fusion model. All right, so that's some of the technical stuff we were talking about with it. And let me get back to it. Now it's actually working on the upscale and in paint technologies. That's why you're seeing the quality looking extremely well when it brings it back in. And I mentioned it generates 1536 by 1536, which is currently the largest resolution right now. And then all three generative features we'll be coming out with are diffusion base. And the purpose while we're separating them is just so we don't have confusion. And last, um, you do have to use an internet. So the internet connection for this, because all of this is being processed in the cloud, but keep in mind, we're ensuring your privacy. We don't store either the input or the output of the images, all right? So I just wanted to go through that with you. We did the creative side of it, and then I wanted to go back through and show you some of the technical side, which honestly, numbers like that just hurt my head. All I care about is I select something I want to erase, 1536 by 1536, that's fine, but you know there's a lot of people out there that want to know the technical side, yes, Carl being one of them, the technical side of it, me personally, I just like the idea that I'm able to take old photos that, like the one, the one we just showed you here, like, you know, here I am taking this picture, this isn't one of mine, I wish it were, you know, but out of the car door or out of the car window, I can't help but get part of the car into it, this solves that problem, all right? Now, if you're, oops, sorry, right here. If you're watching this, let's see if I have it right here. I don't think I do. I did have, I do. Um, it, if you're watching this on a rebroadcast, this is how you could watch us live. So check this out, skylum.events forward slash Luminar Coffee Break. And the reason why it's, um, I invite you to watch it live on Monday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time is because you can stick around like the group that is today, and ask any questions whatsoever pertaining to the topic of today or any photography-related 
um, questions. So if you're here, please stick around. And for everyone else, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you at the next coffee break.